What's up everybody, this is Master Ian Gamer, and given the recent Twitter teaser showing off Overwatch's new maps, I thought I would make a video giving an in-depth analysis of what exactly they show us. So first off, it should be noted that these are all arena maps, meaning that they would presumably show up alongside Eco Point Antarctica when playing 3v3s and 1v1s. Right off the bat, this disappointed me. While I'm certainly glad to see more variety being added to the arcade, I was really hoping to get another regular quick play slash competitive style map. This is primarily just personal preference since I don't really care for 3v3s and 1v1s, so I suppose some people are likely a lot more excited about these than I am. I do have to say though, that I'm quite surprised that we got the three arena maps all at once, and not spread out over a few months. I could see them adding maybe two at once, especially if they're going to be introducing a new game mode alongside them, more about that later. But all three at once seems a little generous. I suppose this explains why it's been so long since the previous map, as they were working on multiple to all be released together. However, this does still concern me in that it may mean it'll be a long time before we get any more maps afterwards. Namely, the three confirmed standard game mode maps we know will be released sometime later this year. In fact, given that it will be halfway through 2017 in just another month, that only leaves about six months for them to release three full-size maps. That'll be interesting to see play out but let's not get too ahead of ourselves with speculation. As for now, we have the three maps they teased on Twitter, so let's start our analysis of them. Quite interestingly, all three appear to be located in existing map locations, being Dorado, Eichenwald, and Temple of Anubis. I'm really not sure how I feel about this. On the one hand, given that many of the textures and models used in these new maps already existed from their standard game mode counterparts, they likely saved quite a bit of development time by doing this. Development time which could go into making more maps and game content. But on the other hand, it's disappointing that in a universe with so many unexplored locations, they had to remake three which already existed. In fact, I made a video listing off the top 10 new map locations I'd like to see in Overwatch. So if you're interested, feel free to click the link on screen now. While I was initially taken aback by their choice to reuse locations, I'm now of the mindset that it will really come down to how the maps actually look. If the maps do a good enough job of being interesting on their own, then I think I'll be fine with them doing this. And, given what little we can see from the Twitter teaser, it looks like there's a good chance they will pull this off. So, now that I've beaten around it long enough, how about I actually dive into analyzing the maps themselves from what we can see. The first thing to note is that each of these new maps exhibit a different time of day and or weather than their standard counterparts. This is perhaps my favorite component we can see thus far, as I always love this change in aesthetic. I love when they did this with the maps like Hollywood and King's Row during past events and even more so when they did it permanently for the capture the flag forms of the control point maps. Something as simple as a lighting change like this really makes the world feel real, and lets you see these same places from different perspectives. This might just be me gushing about how much of an atmosphere fanatic I am, but I really love this kind of change and think it offers a lot of appeal to these new maps, even if they are just reusing existing locations. So to go through them one by one, let's start off with Dorado. We get two shots here, showing that the time of day has shifted from night to either dusk or dawn. The first shot shows off a small plaza with a large statue in the middle. I can't tell who the statue is supposed to be, but hopefully it is some kind of lore tied to it. On the left side is a spawn room, which is actually rather interesting in its own right, and I will touch on why a little later. The other notable thing in this shot to me is the large door on the right side and the window above it. This looks similar to the first choke of the regular Dorado map, 
although the door is closed here. If we look through the window, it appears that there is open space on the far side of this wall, implying that the majority of the map will be located over there. The fact that the only visible way to access there is by climbing or flying through the window implies that there must be either another way around, or possibly some way to actually open the door. The latter of these two possibilities would be quite intriguing. Moving on to the second Dorado shot, we see what is clearly Sombra's personal hacking hideout. Given the fancy layout of this room, as well as the story significance, I'm guessing it'll lie somewhere near the center of the map, just like May's cryo chamber on Eco Point Antarctica. While I'm sure the screens and devices here are loaded with easter eggs and information, unfortunately, we can't get a close enough look here to read anything. Seems like we'll just have to wait to play on the map ourselves to discover its secrets. Moving on to the next map, we have Eichenwald. Of all the aesthetic changes made to these three maps, this is my favorite. They took the regularly bright sunny day and turned it into rainy fog. While we can't really tell from the images whether or not the fog will inhibit visibility at longer ranges, that would be a cool effect for them to implement. So looking at the first image shown, we can see what looks like a generator box sitting next to an old German style building. Everything is overgrown with leaves and vines, even more so than what we see on the standard Eichenwald map. The corridor on the left, as well as the barely visible doorway on the right, indicate that this map may have substantial indoor areas, and may lend to it having an overall large size as well. The next image shows a relatively open area, with large pine trees scattered throughout it. The remains of a massive omnic lie at one side, seemingly providing a means of access into a doorway on the top left. This doorway, along with two others seen in the back right, further support my suspicion that this particular map may have many indoor locations and places to hide. Moving on to the final new map, we have Nighttime Temple of Anubis. It shares the characteristic tan stone structures that we are used to seeing in its standard form. However, this one has some interesting new details included. We can see what appears to be two workbenches against the wall beneath this overhanging structure. Additionally, in the right side forefront, there appears to be a makeshift table made out of cinder blocks and a shipping pallet. This whole setup to me indicates that there is some kind of research or perhaps archaeological work being done here. The last detail of note is the mostly obscured doorway on the left side, which seems to possibly have the yellow aura of a spawn room door, but this may just be the result of whatever lighting is through it. For the final picture, we see the outside of a massive stone building in the background, with a lit doorway leading into it. This part of the map looks fairly open, with a large obelisk standing on the left side. At the very bottom of the image, we can see what appears to be a drop-off, likely leading to a death pit. Hopefully, this means we'll be getting some more boop-friendly locations. So, having now reviewed each image of each new map, I can safely say that they all look very nice. Despite my reservations that I emphasized earlier, I am actually excited to see what these look like in their entirety. Even if they aren't new locations, they still are visually pleasing maps. Now, there is one thing I wanted to address regarding these maps, and that is the possibility of a new game mode to accompany them. Given that these are going to be released along with the anniversary event, and events usually have a new game mode accompanying them as well, this seems quite likely. It's even more supported by the spawn room door we see in the first image of the Dorado map. On it, we can see the yellow healing barrier that, as of right now, doesn't exist on the Eco Point Antarctica map. Thus, this could either be indicating a completely new game mode altogether, or perhaps a rework of how the current 3v3 and 1v1 game modes play as that's something which Blizzard has openly discussed having an interest in doing. Either way, this will be an interesting thing to look forward to. Well, that's all I've got for now. This is Master Ian Gamer signing off. Thanks for watching, and if you want to check out my other anniversary event thoughts and predictions, click on the link on screen. Also, 
please leave a comment below with your thoughts about these maps. Feel free to like, share, subscribe, and follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with all my future content. Until next time, keep mapping out your life, and have a great day.